today we are, our topic today is the journey. The topic, the journey. Uh, I found myself singing a song, Jesus is tenderly calling today. I didn't find the number, but I think before we go ahead and pray, we should sing that song. I want to thank Hybeck for his um, talent, using his talent to glorify God. I would actually um, encourage you to do is to go to Revelation 2, 4 and 5 in our King James Bible and, and read from there that we can actually get the full understanding of what is really, really happening here. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4 and 5. And this is what it says. I hope you're all there already. It says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Do you see that part? In the King James it says, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast left thy first left. Revelation 2. Are we there? And verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. And repent. And do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly. And will remove thy candlestick out of his place. And thou. Except thou repent. And um. You know when I, when I read verse 5. That we should remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. We got to remember that our four parents were in a state of perfection. So I think it is in sync with exactly what is being said in um, Psalms 119 verse 1 to 8. You know, it, it's saying, you know, uh, we were in a state of perfection and God is calling us back to that state. Only if we are willing and obedient, really the good of the land. You know, so repent and do the first works. You know, and, I, and, I, and I'm, you know, I'm driving it right back to when God created man and man was in their perfect state. Mm -hmm. He said, and he said, repent and do the first work. I said, I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. The, the, the devotional thought that says that the Redeemer of the world declares that there are greater sins than that for which Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. When I read that, I realized that um, I thought I knew the story of Sodom and Gomorrah great, um, quite well. But when the print of inspiration opened my eyes and I begin to say, those who hear the gospel invitation calling sinners to repentance and eat it not are more guilty before God than were the dwellers in the veil of Sidon. And still greater sins is theirs who profess to know and to keep his commandments, yet who deny Christ in their character and their daily life. In the light of the Savior's one, in the faith of Sodom is a solemn admonition. And I don't want you to just keep this one by yourself. Give it to people. Because sometimes, and it is good that you turn up your nose and the, the, the Sodomites and the otherites, that um, you know, the homosexuals and the gays and those, but you are reading today that those who hear the gospel invitation calling sinners to repentance and eat it not are more guilty before God than were the dwellers in the veil of Sidon. You are reading it for your first time and it says in the light of the Savior's one in the faith of Sodom is a solemn can you imagine that? A solemn admonition not merely to those who are guilty of outbreaking sin but all but to all who are trifling with heaven sent light and privileges I want to say here that homosexuality is wrong. Gay and lesbianism, however we want to put it, is wrong. Mm. But what is more wrong? Those who hear the gospel invitation calling sinners to repentance and eat it, it not. The pen of inspiration says they are more guilty before God mm. than were the dwellers in the veil of sin. And, and he said, and still greater sin is theirs. 
who profess to know God and to keep his commandments, they profess they are more guilty. Yet who deny Christ in their character and their daily life in the light of the Savior's warning? And I go back over here is the fate of Sodom. We know what happened to Sodom. Mm. It's a sallow admonition. This is, this, this is something that we should take, like, you know, in a solemn way and look down and see what happened. Not merely those, to those who are guilty of outbreaking sin, but all who are trifling with heaven sent light and privilege and boy. Christ came, as it's done 360 of God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe it. You know, I want to say that, um, you know, when somebody lose their mind and do not appreciate God, don't look for them to be resurrected on resurrection morning. What was going to happen? Eh? What do you think going to happen? They have no appreciation for God on earth. You think they're going to have appreciation for God in heaven? Remember, it said that the same way you go out is the same way, and God is not, you're not going to waste any time. Kind of inspiration speak heavily on that. He even talk about slaves who all they knew was to, to be subjected to their master's will. You, you know, and she, she spoke extensively, and what do you think God will do? We go on to say the Savior watches for a response. To his offers of love and forgiveness with a more tender <coughs> compassion than that which moves the heart of an earthly parent to give, to forgive a wayward, suffering son or daughter. He cries after the wanderer, Return unto me, and I will return unto you. Malachi 3 and verse 7. But if the erring one persists, then to refuse. To heed the voice of that call, him or her with pity and tender love, he or she will at last be left in darkness. It is no time for us now to be ifing and guessing. And one of the things why I even begin to pray differently for our children is because some of them do have a mind of their own and we have to pray that the Lord will help them to mm -hmm. understand, thus said the Lord, that their mind will be perfected, that they can be accepted by God Amen. that on that great day because if their mind is not there I'm telling you mm. I'm telling you today mm. that this journey mm. the, when these people in uh, the wilderness traveling lost their mind mm. and go on against it they said the whole the herd just buried them right there they're forgotten and they're forgotten and we realize that though they, even though they see that I didn't take heed, we realize that down the road, he said, all of them would perish in the wilderness. He says, even their clothes, their shoes outlive them. So this is not our time for us to play. This is not our time for us to think that God is, if in his, we need to go back to his word and understand he is telling it to us we should turn to a state of perfection and stop playing around. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 2, 4 and 5. And the psalmist never means in word. He tells us this man, say, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. Tell us in the verse, the first one. 119 verse 1. He's calling us back. And he's telling us that we need to return. Mm -hmm. To turn to a state of perfection. Or a state of sincerity. That he can save us. Tell us that he, he, he wants to save us from sin. And we know that sin is nothing good. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm saying that our worship must be involved when every day when we stand and give God glory, praise Him for these wonderful words that He has put in our body where we can see clearly. Give Him the hallelujah. Give Him the veneration of our praise. And nobody, when we give him his will, never, nobody can take his glory. None. Amen. So as we glorify him today for hearing these things, Amen. may we give him the praise the honor, and honor of glory because indeed we are on a journey. Yes. Yes. He goes on to say, The ark that has long slighted God's mercy, and this one was tough for me. Mm. 
The heart that has long slighted God's mercy becomes hardened in sin and is no longer susceptible to the influence of the grace of God. Finished! Mercy. And since he has brought us here, it shows in us, or it telling us, that our hearts are susceptible, susceptible to his mercy. And, and, you know, and his grace. Faith fearful will be the doom of that soul of whom the pleading Savior shall finally declare he is joined to idols. Let him alone. Mm -hmm. This is not no, this is tough talk. Leave him alone, Jesus said. Don't bother with him. No, today when we say that Christ is calling us, say, come out from among them, my people. And being separate, we find people come up with psychological statements to say foolishness. Christ is calling. And that is why the sign, I, I put that thing in gold in a golden platelet or a golden frame. Because those words outside here meant a lot to me. It will be more terrible in the day of judgment for the cities of the plain than those for than for those who have known the love of Christ and yet have turned away to choose the pleasures of, of a world of sin. You know, the man at the pool of Bethsaida knew that something good was happening. Many of us would have said, well, you know what? Just bid me and leave me here because Christ will find me here. The moving of the water, according to the scripture, was at the pool of Bethsaida. That's where Christ showed up. That man was sick. Pride of God us wouldn't want to do nothing. But he showed up at that spot. So we could say he went to church even though he was sick. And God healed him right there. And there are many other instances too. With the blind man come to Christ and when he touched him he realized he was seeing men walking as trees mm. and he touched him again and he sees clearly they weren't warm amen, amen. they came to or they, if you want to put it this way they come to worship Jesus at a special place the Bible tells us most of the miracles that God wrought was on a Sabbath day mm. they came to a special place and bonus that most of the time what happens is that many times when you ask people if they have dead and tell them too that it is pride in your heart, they will tell you, no, I don't have any pride, Brother Francis. But what happens is that the devil uses sickness to keep many of us away from our blessing. Mm -hmm. And that is true. Mm -hmm. It says, You who are slighting the offers of mercy, think of the long array of Figures accumulating against you in the books of heaven. Call you, you say, no, 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 no. You can imagine the, the figures. One, two, three, four, five, six, that, seven. Mm -hmm. Just imagine. Mm -hmm. Just open your eyes and our mind is mine and read. He said, For there is a record kept of the impieties of nations, of families, of individuals. Mm. God may be a long while the account goes on and cause repentance and offers of pardon may be given. Yet, a time will come when the account will be full. There's nothing of your page run out. Amen? Mm. With the computer begin to show us now something like a page full, the phone too. You know, so then you call somebody to leave a message and they tell you so then you can't leave no more message. The page is full. Done. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying if I had you probably have a call two or three days before, probably you will be able to squeeze in a message. Mm -hmm. But now it is full, you can't take any more. The person is not answering, page is full. Mm -hmm. That's man setting. So his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are much higher. Yeah, yeah. So when the soul's decision has been made, when by a person's own choice, one destiny has been fixed, then the signal will be given for judgment to be executed. 
that we have our sermon actually reflect this, the journey. The suggested topic journey gives the indication of movements. Not just regular movements, but movements with obstacles, hardship, temptations, and a proving station. Setbacks with dependence upon one. Because I want to say, when I say setback, well, our dependence must be on Jesus. So we know that he's going to make a way out of no, no way. Our dependence must be on Jesus. The one in whom nothing is impossible to those who believe. Because he is still the reward of those who diligently seek him. Jesus Christ I'm talking about. Amen. We have great problems. As the scripture tells us in Psalms 119, verse, verse 5, not 105, Psalms 119, verse 5 says, Oh, that my ways were directed to keep my thy statutes. And we know that the ways of man is not directed by him, but by, 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 by any man. The ways of man is directed by God. But you have to come to him. I know that he is the word of them that diligently seek him. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. So there is a connection. There is a connection needed that our direction will be always be towards God. Amen. And for this, we give Christ the glory always for his mercy. Amen. His grace, <clears throat> His sacrifice. You know, when I get inquisitive a couple days ago and decide to look at what mercy, He said that mercy is the unmerited favor. We don't deserve no mercy from God. Mm -hmm. And when He's given us by calling us and we turn our back, what do we expect? He is calling us. Amen. And I thank him. You know, and I pray indeed that we have heeded to his call. Amen. The spirit and the truth and holiness must be in the right proportion for worship to be accepted. I did not say this. The scripture says that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But as I talk about the highway of holiness, and I'm saying this morning that this tree must be in it in the right proportion for worship to be accepted. 2 Peter 1 verse 10. And we're going to spend a little while here. 2 Peter 1 verse 10. And I know there will be, we're going to go back to, to more, to a little, you know, probably up to five. For us to really understand something more. Second Peter. Second Peter 1. First. Second Peter 1. This is what verse 10 says. Wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if he do these things, he shall never fall. I thank God for those words. Amen. Because it says here, you know, in, um, in verse 3 of 2 Peter 1, it says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him, that had called us to glory and virtue. Nobody else don't call us to glory and virtue. It is Christ and he give us things that pertain unto life. Verse 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these he might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This man in the calling is great. The calling is cannot be denied. Amen. A lot of people, as I said, and it's not that I'm throwing word. 
they do not want Jesus. They say that Jesus is their friend, but he is not their friend because they do not take him as their friend. Because they do not reject his word. Mm -hmm. They would have given him even a second try. Verse 5 says, beside this, giving all diligence, and I want you to underline the word diligence, had to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance Patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have it to tell us seeking first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Proverbs, Proverbs things 3 it tells us something too that, um, that we must acknowledge the Lord. Amen? Amen. We must acknowledge him in all our ways. Amen. Acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Amen. And so if we don't acknowledge the Lord, are we how can he direct our path? So whatever wherever we're going, we're not with God. He's not directing somebody else is. Mm -hmm. There's no middle ground with God. There's no neutral with God. As many of us, because those who are professing, I think they are, their gear is in neutral. Mm -hmm. And so it goes on. It says, um, for if these things be in you and abound they make you that ye shall neither be barren. Amen? Amen. Shall neither be barren. Meaning that you're not going to be idle. You won't be idle. And you will be fruitful. Amen? Amen. And it says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Mm -hmm. And had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. I give God glory today and I praise his name for really, really um, sending his spirit to teach us these things. Amen. And he promised that today is Sabbath you will and I give you Lord glory and I honor you even far more than I used to do before for being in our presence today. Amen. The blueprint, the pathway is his name to us. Amen. If we travel this, we shall never fall. Mm. never fall and we have it before us virtue, faith, knowledge temperance patience spiritual godly patience, godly godliness mm -hmm. because sometimes some of these things that people are talking about godliness, it has no spirituality it's not from heaven mm -hmm. it's their leading on their own understanding and the scripture says don't do it you only know your own understanding all your ways acknowledge in God and he will direct your path Amen. we are called to a journey and it's never be to one's liking the journey that we are called you will never like it none of us like it but in obedience to God we are going to Canaan land Amen. Amen. Because I'm in a prison. But when, hallelujah, when they decide to sing and to pray, sing songs of praise, mm. there comes the earthquake. Amen. Amen. Here comes the earthquake. Here comes the east wind. Mm. Here comes the earthquake. And all shackles fall off. Amen. Amen. And it wasn't done for Paul alone. It was done for Peter to many others. Mm. And we will not forget him. We're not forgetting. Because it says that Christ left the splendor of heaven. Knowing his destiny. destiny. One song says that he could have called when, when they came upon him. He could have called what? Ten thousand angels. But he just wrestled on his own. In the name of the will of his Father. Amen. We feel the agony of the call. All of us feel the agony of the call. But because we know that the call is right, we keep keeping on. 
And I just want to thank you, my friends. I just want to thank you. You know, Christ knew. He feel, he feel the agony of his God. They spat upon him. They, 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 they do everything, even to foil his Nazarite vow. They did everything. Many of us had prayed sincere prayers when we were kids to leave our mm -hmm. Egypt. Oh. We had prayed. Life was hard back in my country. Hard. And I was told that there was a place at America as if money was on tree. But there was no money on no tree. But the life here, the, the, the life, you know, probably you might not agree with me, or probably you might agree with me. Because many times we were in Jamaica and here, light gone. Sometimes we see people have to be sitting in a lot of canister for water. And sometimes the water is, is filthy, it's no good. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not saying it don't happen here. But compared to, uh, to where we are from, you know, many times with those of us who live in the country, we thank God for the river. Mm -hmm. Today we realize that in many places there's no running water. Mm -hmm. and, and if there's running water, they just run for a while. We always see all these black tanks on top of roofs. And so, um, in all fairness, I think here is, you know, and, and this year I've taught us that when we go back home, we can actually set it up that we are free flowing running water. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we learn a thing or two. So, you know, um, I, you know I, I don't think it is a bad thing, you know, to say, thank God for America. Because I think that's when if you look at the money in God, we trust. We're not trusting in the money. Amen? We are trusting in God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some of us had volunteered to go over to Macedonia. You know, when we heard that um, sometimes a family member would come and say, man, if you come and, you know, help me. Sometimes these people are sick. And they say, well, you know, you treat me so nice if you, you know, help me. But when we come, sometimes we walk away from the people who help us for a better day. And um, sometimes we, 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 we grow sad. And, some, you know, so <clears throat> we have to behave like Paul. It's all about worshiping the Lord. Amen? And the truth. It's all about the truth. Mark 6, verse 8 to 11 tells us something. <coughs> Mark 6. Watch your mark. Mark 6, verse 8. This is what Mark 6, verse 8 says. I read in your hearing. See, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey. Save a staff only. No script. No bread. No money in their purse. The mission of the twelve. They were sent on a journey. No written sermon. No food. Nothing you should take. No bread. No money. No purse. You're going in the name of Jesus. This shows sudden belief in the word of God. But listen to what says it. He says, but he shod with, but be shod with sandals. Put something on your foot, man. Amen? Amen. The gospel of truth, that's what I'm talking about. The heart was to have had something on their foot. Be shod with it. Gospel of all right, peace, so where you want to put it? And not put on two coats, one is enough. I guess when we come back this year, we'll get into the coat part of it. And he said unto them, in what place soever he enter into a house, there abide till he depart from that place. God provides for his people. Amen? Amen. But we have to have the gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen. The journey, we cannot enter the journey without the gospel. Amen. And he said, and whosoever what? Shall not receive you, nor hear you. When he departs, 
Shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. We, we read something a while ago about rejecting the word of God. Amen? Amen. Yeah, the heart, you know, who are slight in the offers of mercy. Think of a long array of figures accumulated against you in the books of heaven. Jesus Christ is real. Amen? Amen. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils. Gospel was with them and Acts supports it also. Acts supports it. The time is at hand. Mm. And things have changed. But God has not changed. Mm -hmm. And so is His Word. We are Laodicea. But many of us uh, probably if not all of us are behaving like Samaria. You know, I didn't know this. I didn't know that Samaria means golden calf. But if we are behaving as we are, that, as we are, if we are behaving as if we are given to idols, then the Lord Christ is going to say that one, well, leave him alone. Remember what you just read? Let him alone. Yes. He joined to idols. Many times that's how we behave as if we are Samaritans or Samaritans or we are Samaria. I think that's the proper way to say it. Because what happens many times we behave as if we are worshipping golden calves. We are not listening to the commandments of God. But today is a day when we have to really come to our senses. We are given the promise or the command to buy gold tried in the fire, Revelation chapter 3. In Hosea, a decoration was made and the pen of inspiration shines light to guide us Pass this. Yes. The art that has long slighted God, as I read it just a while ago. The art that has long slighted God's mercy becomes hardening sin and is no longer susceptible to the influence of the grace of God. You know what a heart like that? When is that susceptible to the grace of God? So it's susceptible to something else. No wonder we see when people, you know, you have people just lying you, you help them, and they turn around and want to stick you in the back. Fearful will be the doom of that soul of whom the pleading Savior shall finally declare. He is what? Giant to idols. Let him alone. Samaria. Hosea 4.17 I know um, we are at Mark but um, uh, I saw it like last night to read Hosea Hosea 6 and verse 6. So let's go back to the middle part of our Bible. Right after Daniel is Hosea. And just look at what 6 verse 6 says. As we reach this juncture. We are about, we're almost home now. Really. So for I desired mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Have you seen that? Yes. For I desired. Amen? Oh, are we 
responsibility to the word of God is a choice. No matter what outward or physical accomplishments are achieved, God is concerned with the attitude of the heart. He desires that an individual total being be involved in the pursuit of the knowledge of God. Jesus quoted this verse to explain to his disciples harvesting on the Sabbath. Matthew 12 and verse 7. And I read that quickly in your hearing. We will go back over this um, passage um, sometime today. Matthew 12, verse 7. Matthew 12 and verse 7 says, this is what it says. But if he had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. He would not have condemned the guiltless. Amen. Amen. We must acknowledge our journey. Even Solomon, even Solomon to whom God gave rest, journeyed. Now, the last messages of mercy is pleading to us in a loud voice and we want to trample even upon the commandments of God to create spiritual events to suggest that we are journeying. The Sabbath was set aside. The Sabbath was set apart. The Sabbath was sanctified for holy use. But we find a lot of people loading a lot of things upon the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Then those who come seeking God turn back because they say this is not what they bargained for. A couple of weeks ago I went to a church and they had a preach a wonderful sermon. Detailing and telling people to have respect on the Sabbath. But then um, the, the early morning um, exercises are the, what they're supposed to do after the sermon. They was to go out. And there was a tug of war. There was a toss up between those who will stay and go into Bible study are those who would go out and um, distribute certain facts in the neighborhood to support something that I don't think it had any saving grace. It was just somebody's idea and plan. Mm -hmm. And God's plan was laid aside. In Revelation 14 and verse 9, the scripture makes it personal. Three times the word is, is linked to the things that draw us from God. Three times. You might say the word is four times, but you will notice that one of them is in italics. That means it is not in the original writing. According to the King James Version. We see his image, his forehead, his hands. The English language defined is as a pronominal adjective. Very big words. The meaning that the word is that is used here in the scripture that we are given to make a choice. That's what it means when you talk about pronominal adjective. Don't be frightened by it. We are given a choice. Mm. The scripture has made accepting Christ a choice. And so is the journey. 
The Lord send you on a journey. It's a choice for you to accept. There's a lot more to Revelation 14 verse 9. About his image, his forehead, and his hand. As I said that the word is, where we have his mark. It's not, it's that, the word his is that in scripture. That was placed there for smooth reading. So I did number it. I number these three things. These three, the image of the beast, and his forehead and his hands, because many people, I, you know, and when it comes to his image, they will accept it quickly because it offers a lot of earthly juice, earthly stuff. A lot of people will go to the psychology of men and accept the wrong in their minds. And a lot of people will, because they use their hands. And um, this is a part where I really, really would like us to sit down to, because many times we, we just accumulate hands to work. But your hand have meaning. The hand have a lot of meaning, a lot of scientific, scientific meaning, and a lot of spiritual meaning when it comes to the hand. But I want to say that um, we have to choose whom we serve. Amen. For the journey is real. We have a lot about Elijah. He understand it. Enoch understood all this. He says he walked. Say the Bible says, you know, walk with God. So when we decide to do our journey, in the name of Jesus, we'll not be walking alone. I pray today that he that out and hear, will hear. Bow your heads with me.